Welcome to Nursing Prep. Push yourself in nursing preparation with smart way. Practice this quiz on www.thestudyblog.com. Fundamentals of Nursing A patient must receive 50 units of humulin regular insulin. The label reads 100 units equals 1 milliliter. How many milliliters should the nurse administer? Option A. Half a milliliter. Option B. 0.75 milliliters. Option C. 1 milliliter. Option D. 2 milliliters. Right answer is. Option A. Half a milliliter. Half a milliliter. How should the nurse prepare an injection for a patient who takes both regular and NPH insulin? Option A. Draw up the NPH insulin, then the regular insulin, in the same syringe. Option B. Draw up the regular insulin, then the NPH insulin, in the same syringe. Option C. Use two separate syringe. Option D. Check with the physician. Right answer is. Option B. Draw up the regular insulin, then the NPH insulin, in the same syringe. Drugs that are compatible may be mixed together in one syringe. In the case of insulin, the shorter acting, clear insulin, regular, should be drawn up before the longer acting, cloudy insulin, NPH, to ensure accurate measurements. A patient has just received 30 mg of codeine by mouth for pain. Five minutes later he vomits. What should the nurse do first? Option A. Call the physician. Option B. Remedicate the patient. Option C. Observe the emesis. Option D. Explain to the patient that she can do nothing to help him. Right answer is. Option C. Observe the emesis. After a patient has vomited, the nurse must inspect the emesis to document color, consistency, and amount. In this situation, the patient recently ingested medication, so the nurse needs to check for remnants of the medication to help determine whether the patient retained enough of it to be effective. The nurse must then notify the physician, who will decide whether to repeat the dose or prescribe an antiemetic. A patient is characterized with a number 16 indwelling urinary foley catheter to determine if option a trauma has occurred option b his 24 hour output is adequate option c he has a urinary tract infection option d residual urine remains in the bladder after voiding right answer is option b his 24 hour output is adequate a 24-hour urine output of less than 500 milliliters in an adult is considered inadequate and may indicate kidney failure. This must be corrected while the patient is in the acute state so that appropriate fluids, electrolytes, and medications can be administered and excreted. Indwelling catheterization is not needed to diagnose trauma, urinary tract infection, or residual urine. A staff nurse who is promoted to assistant nurse manager may feel uncomfortable initially when supervising her former peers. She can best decrease this discomfort by Option A. Writing down all assignments. Option B. Making changes after evaluating the situation and having discussions with the staff. Option C. Telling the staff nurses that she's making changes to benefit their performance. Option D. Evaluating the clinical performance of each staff nurse in a private conference. Right answer is. Option B. Making changes after evaluating the situation and having discussions with the staff. A new assistant nurse manager should not make changes until she has had a chance to evaluate staff members, patients, and physicians. Changes must be planned thoroughly and should be based on a need to improve conditions, not just for the sake of change. Written assignments allow all staff members to know their own and others' responsibilities and serve as a checklist for the manager, enabling her to gauge whether the unit is being run effectively and whether patients are receiving appropriate care. 
Nurse Clarice is teaching a patient about a newly prescribed drug. What could cause a geriatric patient to have difficulty retaining knowledge about prescribed medications? Option A. Decreased plasma drug levels. Option B. Sensory deficits. Option C. Lack of family support. Option D. History of Tourette syndrome. Right answer is. Option B. Sensory deficits. Sensory deficits could cause a geriatric patient to have difficulty retaining knowledge about prescribed medications. Decreased plasma drug levels do not alter the patient's knowledge about the drug. A lack of family support may affect compliance, not knowledge retention. Toilet syndrome is unrelated to knowledge retention. When examining a patient with abdominal pain the nurse in charge should assess. Option A. Any quadrant first. Option B. The symptomatic quadrant first. Option C. The symptomatic quadrant last. Option D. The symptomatic quadrant last. Right answer is. Option C. The symptomatic quadrant last. The nurse should systematically assess all areas of the abdomen, if time and the patient's condition permit, concluding with the symptomatic area. Otherwise, the nurse may elicit pain in the symptomatic area, causing the muscles in other areas to tighten. This would interfere with further assessment. The nurse is assessing a post-operative adult patient. Which of the following should the nurse document as subjective data? Option A. Vital signs. Option B. Laboratory test result. Option C. Patient's description of pain. Option D. Electrocardiographic, ECG, waveforms. Right answer is. Option C. Patient's description of pain. Subjective data come directly from the patient and usually are recorded as direct quotations that reflect the patient's opinions or feelings about a situation. Vital signs, laboratory test result, and ECG waveforms are examples of objective data. A male patient has a soft wrist safety device. Which assessment finding should the nurse consider abnormal? Option A. A palpable radial pulse. Option B. A palpable ulnar pulse. Option C. Cool, pale fingers. Option D. Pink nail beds. Right answer is. Option C. Cool, pale fingers. A safety device on the wrist may impair circulation and restrict blood supply to body tissues. Therefore, the nurse should assess the patient for signs of impaired circulation, such as cool, pale fingers. A palpable radial or lunar pulse and pink nail beds are normal findings. Which of the following planes divides the body longitudinally into anterior and posterior regions? Option A. Frontal plane. Option B. Sagittal plane. Option C. Mid-sagittal plane. Option D. Transverse plane. Right answer is. Option A. Frontal plane. Frontal or coronal plane runs longitudinally at a right angle to a sagittal plane dividing the body in anterior and posterior regions. A sagittal plane runs longitudinally dividing the body into right and left regions. If exactly midline, it is called a mid-sagittal plane. A transverse plane runs horizontally at a right angle to the vertical axis, dividing the structure into superior and inferior regions. Thanks for watching. You can also practice this quiz on www.thestudyblog.com link in description box. If you have any doubt ask in comment section and you like our video then do like, comment, share. Subscribe our channel for regular updates.